but please, the next story is for Mr. President de Sousa. Dear President Buhari and Duke, dear colleagues and dear students, I'm very much honored for three reasons. First of all, because I'm a law professor, so I feel at home being with students. I was for about 44 years, which is a lifetime. Second, I'm very much honored because I recall the thousands and thousands of Portuguese soldiers that died here in the First World War as an example of fight for peace. And third, because I want to greet presidents because they are fighting for peace in their own countries and regions, in Colombia and Nigeria. Thank you very much. Well, five ideas in this kind of pitch you used to young students. First idea, it's impossible to speak of governance, universal governance, without having a choice between unilateralism and multilateralism. It's the debate today. I'm very much pro-multilateralism. But we know there is a wave against it now. And pro-unilateralism. I'm very much pro-multilateralism. And it's the only way, I think, it's the only way of solving global problems in the world. And at the same time, of having rules, international rules, we must respect. Change, of course, adapt, adjust, but, but respect. That's the first idea. The second idea, we must strengthen international organizations. Many of them are outdated. They must be reformed. <clears throat> In a sense, the United Nations Secretary General has already said it several times. But also, the European Union must adjust to new realities. So, on one hand, we must fight for multilateralism. On the other hand, we must keep on reforming and strengthening international organizations. Third idea, it's not possible to have strong international leadership with very weak national weaker leadership. And that's the case today. There is a general <clears throat> crisis in party systems, political systems, partner, social partnership systems all over the world. In Europe, in Latin America, in Africa, in Asia, everywhere. <clears throat> Law and politics are far behind economy, finance, and mostly science, technology, change. We are far behind. And I'm a law professor that says it. So let us change and reform internal, political, social, and economic systems. Fourth idea, <clears throat> to do it, <clears throat> we must have strong civilian societies. We need stronger trade unions, stronger patronage, stronger ONGs, stronger student movements. Without a stronger civilian society, we cannot have internal reforms and international, long-lasting institutions. <clears throat> and finally, fifth idea, we must address economic and social problems. Because it's impossible to have strong civilian societies and thus strong institutional, internal and external and international frameworks without addressing inequalities, poverty, cleavages, cultural, economic, social cleavages, without having a strong role of women, without having a strong role of younger generations, <clears throat> without feeling the gap, which is a, a very, very deep gap in Europe between younger generations and older generations. In other countries, it's different. In your country, it's mostly enough. And in Latin America, it's different because you have young, young countries, demographically speaking. It's not the case of Europe. So without addressing the causes of populism, xenophobia, radicalism, unilateralism, isolationism, internally and externally, you are not able to have strong institutions, both internally and internationally.
And that's all for the moment. I give you my six minutes and a half to you, President. Yeah, pres President. Uh, what was the question? Yes, we are going. We are going to open the open the floor for one or two questions. Please be concrete and brief. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. President, for your pitch. Uh, the microphone. I'm becoming old. Thank you so much, Mr. President, for your pitch addressing both poverty and other issues today and for multilateralism. I wanted to ask you a question concerning what type of the reform do we need in the European Union and also in, in the United Nations specifically? Thank Shall you. I answer immediately or yes. afterwards? Immediately, yes. okay. European Union, we must address the question of EMU. We are half of the bridge. We must cross the bridge. Without it, we shall have always crisis, and the ECB won't have the means of uh, solving the crisis. Of course, it's difficult to change the treaties, but we should do it. We must have a common policy towards migration, refugees, which is not the case, at least a minimal one. We must have a stronger foreign policy, starting with neighboring regions, but going far beyond. We must address questions like security, anti-terrorism, and in the in the way defense, together with other allies, transatlantic allies. And this, of course, requires European convictions, European ideals, but also to be much nearer the people. This project cannot be just the project of the politicians, of the leaders, must be accepted, adopted, and lived by the public opinions. Concerning United Nations, we should reform the Security Council. Doesn't correspond to today's reality. No African country, no Latin American country. India is not there. Uh, I mean, it's far away from the world. Today's world is different from this. And then, of course, change many of the um, international organizations uh, connected with the uh, with United Nations. Of course, Secretary General is trying to. It's a long way because now we're facing just the opposite way. I mean, all of a sudden, we are facing the position of those that say, no, unilateralism, we don't need international organizations, let us throw them away because they don't work. Anyway, they need reform. But they are useful. They are useful. They are, they are the result of a, a long, long work. They must be reformed, but never forgotten, never replaced by the will of a single state, trade war, political war, economic war, social war. It's a mistake. It's a mistake that we shall pay very hard in the future. Thank you. Thank you. We have time for another question. Uh, hi, okay. uh, good afternoon, President de Souza. Thank you very much. Uh, my question is: so in Portugal, you're able very well to decriminalize drugs and to solve a major social issue, whilst in other countries, we're still going backwards on this. Uh, for example, President Duque has made the policy on drugs even harsher in a very counterproducing way. So what can Portugal teach to the rest of the world in its experience to improve drug policy? Well, that is a very specific subject, but I will tell you that we did it through reform and evolution. Well, we had experiment and uh, it worked. It worked with participation, with dialogue between their generations, different generations, <clears throat> between the state, local power, and civil society. And we did it uh, well uh, in a kind of uh, five to 10 years, medium term, and then long term policies. I mean, the government change, but the policies don't change. There is a kind of a social consensus. It's fundamental for any reform, sustainable reform, to have a long-lasting, sustainable consensus.